watch what he does to Patty Mills. Just oh. pulls him back by the throat there. I just don't understand how that's not a flag on one. I finally rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. And a technical foul has been called on Draymond Green. A story developing, Draymond Green has been ejected back-to-back -back technical fouls. Truth is I'm tired, options are few. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Slight little leakage of anger, but I'm fine now. If it wasn't already blatantly obvious to anyone other than Steve Groundhog Kerr, who usually doesn't see anything Draymond does, but he actually had the wherewithal to say he deserved the ejection. During this offseason, the Warriors need to wash their hands clean of Draymond. He needs to be banished from the Warriors organization. He needs to be exiled from the league, to be honest with you. But let's start with him not being on the Warriors anymore. Did you see his face? Ominous. Malevolence. This is the face a boyfriend makes when her father says, have her back by 9 p.m., you hear? And he says, don't worry, sir. I'll take good care of her. This man is a literal tumor to this Warriors organization. And when he does this pose, he's not talking about Curry putting his opponents to sleep. He's talking about his victims that he puts to sleep. What did, what did you think of the Draymond injection? Uh, all I say is we need, we need him. He knows that. We all know that. So whatever it takes to keep him on the floor, uh, he'll be available. It's got to happen. You see that right there? That's an agonized lip bite. Those are frustrated lips. This is stress curry. You see how many times he's blinking his eyes? He is done. He's blinking for every technical Draymond has received this year. But he's going to be professional. He's going to handle it in a very diplomatic way, which he did. He's not going to disparage his teammate in front of the media. He's got tremendous class. And he's also got the heart of a champion. He has Mamba mentality. He has the drive and the will to win. He doesn't want to just be complacent, be a good team every year. He wants to be a great team. He wants to win every single year. Now, many of us sit here and say, well, that's simply not realistic. You can't expect to win a ring every single year. It's just not possible. You're going to have down periods. You're going to have struggle. You're going to have injuries. But in a competitor's mind, especially one that's elite above elite, they strive for the impossible each and every single year. And to see the ship that you've been sailing now for well over 10 years with some of the best displays of basketball anybody's ever seen go down in the way that it's going down. The GM, who was a big reason for putting this all together, Bob Myers, left in the offseason. Andrew Wiggins has been in and out of the rotation dealing with some personal issues. You've got Chris Paul, who was injured for an extended amount of time. You've got a diminished clay. You have a below subpar record and an obnoxiously competitive West. You're teetering on the brink of not even making the playoffs. You've got a bunch of sharks that are these opposing teams circling you because they smell blood in the water. Nobody fears your team anymore like they used to. In fact, they openly welcome the idea of not only facing you, but putting you down. Warriors, come out to play! Warriors! Come out to play! What's your prediction for the fight then? Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. That man wants to rip your hearts out. All of which is going through Curry's mind, and at the very top of it is one of his primary core teammates that's been with him on this ride for so long. He's gone to war with him. Probably one of his close friends as well can't even be bothered to show his teammates some respect in not getting ejected out of the game for easily avoidable self-inflicted nonsense. 
he isn't holding himself to the same standard that you and the other warriors are doing each and every single night. That's why he's crying. And he also knows that the writing is on the wall. He's seeing this team as presently constructed is never going to win a title and people are going to have to get gone. The chapter of dominance is over. The book is on its final pages. It's about to be poorly adapted by Hollywood and a horrible DVD sequel awaits. Do any of you watching still use DVDs or like Blu-ray or something? This is just streaming. I don't know. I'm glad the Warriors were at least still able to win this game. But to put Curry in this position, like you've been doing for so many years, Darth Mule, is extremely disrespectful. You are the most selfish player in the NBA. And you are now also the most delusional, surpassing the system over there on the Clippers. I want to know what the locker room conversations are like before the media even comes in or closed practice sessions where they're talking about these things. Has anyone ever taken it wasn't my intent aside and said, bro, please stop getting ejected. Work on yourself. Deal with your demons. Find God and a therapist. It has to have come up at least once. I just don't know what the conversation is like. Is that fool even receptive? Does he even pretend to care or are the Warriors organization just completely naive or are they still in denial? These problems have been here for quite a many years, even when the Warriors were unstoppable and broken. The primary difference being now they're no longer unstoppable and broken. Darth Mule is far more trouble than he's worth. He's diminished. He isn't the player that he used to be. And the Warriors are not winning. They aren't anywhere close to being a top team, basically, since they won the title last. And, you know, if this was a movie, it just feels like a perfect movie, a perfect way to end it. Oh, you finally win the championship. You silence the naysayers. Curry can't win without Durant. Curry can't win finals MVP. You get all of that. Beautiful. Cut. Send it to Sundance Festival. Get an Oscar. Bravo. These years following just feel like the continuation that no one asked for. Not like this anyway. And I remember seeing an interview where Curry said that 2016 ring, he would do so much in order to be able to just relive that and be able to win. He was given some options to choose from and he picked that 2016 ring. It was a storybook of sorts the Warriors were robbed of. And to this day, even in the years following, you still got people mentioning that fool getting suspended and game five is ultimately what led to the Warriors losing. Now, I don't exactly believe it entirely because it's not like he was gone the entire series. He came back for six and seven, but that killed the momentum. It definitely took a nail out of the Cavaliers coffin and it just disrupted the energy of the entire series. Is there credence to that argument? I think there's some. And if that ended up indeed being the case, this man literally robbed you and this organization out of a ring that you guys rightfully had up 3-1. And it took you years to get rid of that meme to where people didn't say it anymore. And since then, ejections after ejections, suspensions, attacking a teammate that you guys tried to brush up under the rug, saying that, oh, it wasn't that bad. It was a scuffle. We handled it in-house. Then footage of it leaks. Jordan Poole got completely attacked. And not only do you not penalize that madman properly, you go and give him a ring. He attends the award ceremony. And then somebody was like, oh, well, we didn't want him to miss the award ceremony. This is why you guys deserve to fail. You have been coddling this Looney Tune for too long. You let him basically stranglehold your organization. And you somehow think that if you return to form, which simply isn't feasible, that these problems will just go away. No. If this organization still cares about being competitive and winning at the highest level, they will throw that piñata in the recycle bin this offseason. If they don't, Warriors fans should definitely be irate and have a problem with this. Because having another year of bullshit and nonsensical tomfoolery when you guys aren't winning to justify it doesn't make a lick of sense in the slightest. Curry is just too nice and cares too much about his teammates. Let it wasn't my intent have been on the Lakers with LeBron since he'd be kissing up to him a lot in these past few years. He would have been traded. LeBron would have kept the receipt from the zoo he purchased him from. But I digress. Tell me below, what do you think about what I've said? Is there anything you disagree with? Do you think he who must not be named has any saving grace left? 
do tell me below like and subscribe if you are new thank you all so much for watching and i will see you on the next one